Hi there. Today I want to talk about how I build a PC into a vintage tuner. Because this one is pretty special to me. Uh, this case has been manufactured in Japan, uh, traveled to the United States, then traveled to the Netherlands, and then traveled back to the United States. So I grew up with this tuner and th this is how I listened to the radio uh, growing up. Uh, my dad bought it in the 80s um, and at some point it stopped holding the channel. It would just start drifting and so he bought a digital tuner because they were cheap and, and worked way better. I mean they don't change they don't change the channel at all, they don't drift. The cool part is that this is all made for for rack audio so it even comes with these awesome brackets. It's, it's, this is like 19 inch, this is for a 19 inch rack, it's like server stuff <laughs> but then for audio. And they're heavy, you can, you can hear it. Clunk. And so, um, at that time, so circa 2005, um, I got an AMD Athlon 64, as you can see right here on the sticker. Um, because I was trying to build cheap, and the, the cheapest way to do it at that time, like under $500, was like um, get a motherboard with an iGPU and get a Athlon 64. Uh, and and it also had like the graphics integrated in the in the motherboard I believe so I could do whatever and um, you know just your basic college stuff and browsing and playing videos not so much gaming a little bit uh, if you turn everything down to the lowest setting I, I could play GTA what was it, San Andreas, at the lowest settings. That's, that's basically what it was good for. And, um, and some browser games. But then after a while, I've, uh, so I don't upgrade my, my computer that often. I, I upgrade it every five to seven years or so. And so around um, 2010 or so, I noticed that it couldn't, play HD video because basically starting when, when did HD, HD come out like 2008 or something something like that so I wanted to play HD video and couldn't do it so I started to look for new parts and everything oh I forgot something uh, 2005 right so I needed I, I made a cutout here in that window for um, a DVD burner so I could play DVDs because you really needed them to install software and and to play video and, and you know just DVDs and and also you people were burning and copying and doing stuff <laughs> but then around 2010 or 2011 People were, uh, he didn't really need this anymore. The internet was fast enough to just download everything. So then I had a hole left. And so when I moved to the next setup, which is the AMD Phenom 2, then I needed something to fill the hole. And I was like, oh, you know what's cool? A fan controller. <laughs> I just love I, I just love this kind of stuff, this nerdy stuff. And um oh since we're at the front, I also uh the, the so the tuner had all these buttons. Uh these are not functional. I, w I still wanna make these functional. I, w I wanna make this like a volume knob or something, or maybe this one. But I, I couldn't find anything that would work. There there was a thing, there was like this this knob that is new used for I don't know video editing or something but it only works on the Windows XP so I can't I can't use that anymore so what I did um, of course 
it says power so this is the power so if you just hold it for a little bit it just turns up and if you flip it back then it turns back on and this is the the light <laughs> okay so I built this in 2005 right so this light is not RGB <laughs> it's B <laughs> <laughs> it's called cathode and then um, I have two USB ports here two USB 3 one here one here and then I uh, still need to or if I ever get to it get like a headphone jack or something in here in this one because I mean what else are you gonna put in it so yeah that's uh, pretty much the outside um, now I'm gonna move on to the inside let's take the cover off so we can see what's going on on the inside so yeah I put some fans some uh, I believe these are 60 millimeter fans I put three of them here in the bottom and then um, I have one 80 millimeter millimeter fan back here in uh, at the time it was fine but in hindsight I, I should have do, done two because you can actually fit two 80 millimeter fans above your IO cutout you, this is about uh, 150 mil but you know with a little bit creative spacing <laughs> you have a little bit extra on this side and a little bit extra on this side so you can basically put two here I should have done that but I didn't and then also I use my uh, power supply as an extra exhaust fan this is uh, a silent um, so this this one doesn't doesn't make a lot of noise and and it's um, 140 millimeter fan so it also is an exhaust and it when you I forgot to do the math right now but a 120 is double a, a, a 120 millimeter fan like I think this is a 120 yeah that moves double the amount of air than an 80 millimeter fan so this 140 probably moves even more but yeah it, it's been slow because it's silent so who knows who knows but it it works um, so yeah we we have the below this is the is the Phantom 2 X4 965BE I think it is <laughs> and it's an awesome overclocker as well I, I I didn't really care about overclocking but I did just because I like playing with computers and so it comes at 3.4 gigahertz and I could get it to either like 4 gigahertz on all cores or I could um, actually do something better and that is um, what's that called like front side bus overclocking so I got it to 3.85 or something like that and then that way I also sped up the the PCIe bus and the memory and blah 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 and I ran my <laughs> this is DDR3 30 uh, 1333 but I could run, run it at, at 1600 overclocked so that's pretty cool and then this is um, Radeon HD 6850 because it's cheap and actually this is the hard drive I think this may be the hard drive that I got 15, 16 years ago uh, that's a little bit scary um, so yeah I started off with this one and then I got an SSD that's supposed to go here but it's busted right now it, I, I don't know it's corrupted I, so I'm 
uh, trying to figure it out by plugging it into another computer and maybe reinstalling Windows or just formatting, reinstalling, and then putting it back in here and see if it will work. Um, and so, because this is such a tiny case, no, not really tiny. <laughs> it's not like a Dr. Zaber or whatever it's called. But it's relatively small for um, for like a PC case. And it's also an awkward format and everything. So I had to make this rack to hold up my hard drives because you have your power supply, you have your motherboard. It's an M MATX because it doesn't fit a full ATX. Um, and then I needed somehow, oh, and the main, uh, one of the reasons that I put this in is because I had that DVD burner. And so it was just hanging here on the front. And so it needed something to rest on. So it would just be like on here. And then I also needed uh, some space to put my hard drives. And as you can see, it's pretty crammed already. So I I just bought these aluminum U profiles and uh, got some drawings just of Google images. Just search, um, you know, three and a half inch hard drive and two and a half inch hard drive and just look at the hole spacing and everything. And so I made holes for both uh, two and a half and, and then three and a half inch hard drives. And so you have your three and a half here, the, the big big hard drive, the, the spinning rust, as Wendell likes to say, from uh, Level 1 Techs. And then there's also holes so I can put in uh, the SSD. Those are the, the ones that are not used on these ones, of course. But uh, I spaced them so that it will sort of work. So. I hope you enjoyed looking at this case mod, my first case mod, I have another one coming up and um, I'll see you in the next video and uh, do this <laughs> if you like it, thanks, bye.